This is level K, list 12, and we're doing the day one. And here we're looking at the A making the X sound as in any. So let's many, any way, anything. So I've got any in all of these words, but we're really looking at the A making that X sound in these words. Okay, you can highlight that. Just put the little E above the A to remind you it's saying it. We can put, even put the sound lines in, so that's the sound it's making. It. And a little cup above it to say that's its short sound. Okay, everybody, we've got the it sound in here too, so we've got every, every, every. And here we need a different colour again to show that we're looking at the word friend. So just be careful the I comes before the E here. Um, now all of these any's end with the Y in the end. Um, you know, I'll choose another colour here. You've got the AY here, that mm sound there, that nasally sound. One from the word, the number one body, you've got the E sound there, um, everything, you've got the NG again, where, uh, H E A R. okay, so quite a tricky list, but you have got some consistency in that you've got any and every, and then we've got similar words um, on the end of those words. So let's have a look at what these words mean. So any means one or some of a thing, or it could mean a number of things. Um, it could mean no matter how much or how many you have of something. Um, many means lots of things. Anyway, um, you probably use that when you're speaking to someone to support a point of view that you're trying to make or to change a subject where you might say, oh, anyway, let's, let's get going or something. So you're changing the conversation. Anything refers to a thing, no matter what. Um, anyone means the same as anybody. It means any person. Everybody means every person. Everything means all the things that you're talking about. Everywhere means every place, all the places. And a friend means your pal, someone you like to be with is your friend. Okay, let's go back to read the word, sound the word, spell the word, write the word. So get your little bit of paper and we've got any, et, n, e, et, n, e, et, n, e, a, n, y, a, n, y, a, n, y. Cover it and write the word three times. You really don't have to be thinking while you do this list because you Remembering to write the A for that, it sounds a little bit tricky. This is level K, list 12, and we're doing the day two. And in these words, we've got the letter A making the it sound in any, many, anyway, anything, anyone, anybody. And in these ones, we've got the it sound with the letter E. So we've got everybody, everything, everywhere and friend. So let's go back and have a look at some of the other things that we can see happening in these words. We know we've got the E sound at the end of any is a Y and we know that Y commonly makes the E sound at the end of a word. So any, any, any. Now these words here are just two words that we commonly use together and eventually over time they've become, become a compound word. So anybody, everybody, so we've got lots of Y's saying E in these words. And then you've got um, some other little revision bits as well. So you've got the TH in thing and the mm, that nasally mm sound at the end thing. In Y you've got the AY making the A sound. One comes from the number one, so it's the O N E version, but oddy. Now this is quite unusual. It's one of the ten words that we commonly use where we have 
a short vowel, but we're not doubling the consonant after it. So we've got um, body, city, pity, there's, there's not a lot of them. So the general rule is after a short vowel, you put two consonants, but this one, body, we're not doing that. So this is a short vowel sound. Thing, you've got the TH again with the ng everywhere. You've got that ERE. And friend, you've got the I before the E there, making that it sound. Okay, so um, if we go down to the um, write the list word and match to the correct meaning, any direction, a lot, any person, a person I like, any object, all things, all people, all places, one or some. So these all ones indicate that it's going to be an every word. And these ones starting with any indicate that they're going to be one of these any words. You can work out which words go in to fill those definitions. Now here you're going to make new words and write them to any way, anything, anyone, anybody. Same on this side. Now what's the opposite to these words? So the opposite to few, enemy, nothing, foe, and no one or no place. You can finish that page on your own. This is level K, list 12, and we're doing the day three. And in these words, we've got the A making the et sound, as in any, many, anyway, anything, anyone, anybody. And we've got the E saying et in everybody, everything, everywhere, and friend. So let's have a look. A lot of these words end in the Y for the E sound. So we know that when we have a long E sound at the end of a word, we usually use just a Y to make that sound. Um, body, and that's it. Okay, the other things that we've got in these words that we need to highlight is the A, Y, in, way. Oh, we missed a Y here in any, 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 any. You can go back and pop those in. Um, we've got the ng, that nasally sound in where, that the ng makes. We've also got the th saying th. So any one, this one is from the number one. So it comes from the word lone, lonely, alone. If they didn't want to spell it like we spell I want a race because um, they wanted to show that it was a different word to that, so they wanted a different spelling. So they looked at words that meant lonely, like alone, lone and lonely, and they took the O-N-E out of those. So body is quite an exceptional word because we've got a short op sound here. There's not many words where we only have a consonant, one consonant after a short vowel sound. There's about 10 words that we commonly do this with. So body is one that you must remember. In every, we've got the er sound here. And if we go back to that green, we've also got the Y in every, in all of those words, making that long E sound. So we've got that NG again here with the TH saying the foot. Everywhere. You've got the WH there, so, and you've got the ER again there. So in every where, if you say where, you can feel the air after the W, so you know there's an H. A lot of um, people get mixed up with where and were. So if you say were, no air, no H. Where, there's air, so there's an H. So that's a very handy trick for about 5,000 words. So. That could be something useful for your friend. Um, you've got the I before the E, so friend. That I is pretty much silent. Um, all right, let's go through and read the word sound words and spell them and then write them on the line. So get your little bit of paper to cover with. And we're going N E N E A N Y A N Y. Cover it and write it. Now these ones with more than one syllable, you're probably better to break them up into syllables. So you go ev, er, e, bod, e. 
So it's quite a long multisyllabic word and then you'd have to spell it before you write it. Now, comparatives and superlatives. This is where we want to say more friendly and the most friendly. So we've got a little alert there for you. If a word ends in Y and there's a consonant before the Y, you change the Y to an I before you add the ER and the EST. So ER means more, so more friendly. EST means the most friendly, so friendliest. So you'd go friendly, change Y to an I, add ER. Here you go friendly, change Y at the end to an I and add your EST. So down here it says make new words and use in a sentence. You've got friendship, you can write a sentence about that, and unfriendly, you'd write a sentence about that. Possessive apostrophes. Okay, my friend's, friend's bike is lost. What we first of all have to do is work out if the word after, where we think we need a possessive apostrophe, if that word after it can belong to this word. So can you own a bike? Yes. So this one could be a possessive apostrophe. R. Can R belong? No, you can't own an R. Bag. Can you own a bag? Yes, you can. Can you own a book? Yes. The next thing we have to do is to decide whether this word here is in its, is a plural or, or a singular word. So my friend's bike is lost. We'd be looking at that word being one friend, because you're talking about my friend's bike is lost, there's not lots of bikes, there's only one. So it should be, we need to highlight the base word to know where we're going to put the apostrophe in. So my friend, it wouldn't be friends because we've only got one. Our family's friends, okay, we know here we're not going to have an apostrophe. We've already decided that you can't own an R. Um, our family's friends, so we don't need the one with the apostrophe because we know that they can't own R. Okay, everybody's bag, so that's lots of people. Um, bodies, so we know that we do, yes, we can own a bag, so we're talking about everybody's, so we can highlight the one with the apostrophe. Here, can someone own a book? Has anyone's book gone missing? Yes, we can have the apostrophe in there, so we're going to choose the word with the apostrophe. Remember that the um, base word is anyone there, and the apostrophe must go after the base word. So my friend, um, where have we got one here? Everybody and anyone would be your base word and the apostrophe goes after the base word and then you add the S just to say that this thing belongs to them. Um, if you said my friend bike, that doesn't make sense. So we know you only have one friend. The only reason that S is added is because it would sound funny if we didn't say friends, my friend's bike. Our family friends are coming, that's fine. Everybody bag, no. Even though the base word is everybody, we have to put the S to make it sound better. Everybody's bag, that's why we're adding the S after the apostrophe. Has anyone book? No, it sounds weird, has anyone's book? We know it's only one, but, um, so we know the base word is any one, that's why the apostrophe has to go after the singular base word. So you can um, write those in. Now then down the bottom it says fill in the gaps with the list word or extensions. Lucy invited something of her something to her party. Um, so you can work out what those missing words are. It's a whole story that you have to fill in. This is level K, list 12, and we're doing the day four page, and it's about prefixes today. So a prefix is added to the start of a word. So you can see the prefixes here are un, pre, dis, and re. So they all go at the start of the word. If you're adding something to the end of a word, it would be a suffix, and that changes quite often the function of a word as well. 
Okay, this mainly changes the meaning of the word. So it can change happy to unhappy. Now we've given you a few little hints here. If you write, highlight the base word first, it might help you. So happy would be the base word, so we've got to add something to it. It says not, so look up here, it says not. So to make it say not, we'd have to put unhappy. Now the base word here is like, so you put like in here. Let's see what the base would be. The prefix would be, it's got to be not, meaning not, there's not there. So we'd have to add dis to make it say not like, dislike. So you write the base word in. So paid beforehand. So let's have a look. The base, the word, the base word will be paid. Beforehand is going to tell us what the prefix is. The prefix would have to be pre. So you'd have to put prepaid. So you're always putting those prefixes in first and then the base word, but highlight the base word to make it easier and then look for the prefix that matches the other information we've given you here.